Meta has been relatively quiet when it comes to AI, but if you look at everything they're doing behind the scenes, I think you'll find they're preparing for a huge breakout in the field of AI. On this episode of AI Focus, we'll dive into their new chips that will set the precedent for the metaverse and other AI dealings, and at the end of the video, we'll look at the dangers this may pose. But first, let's talk about why computer chips are more important to AI in the first place. To understand the importance of computer chips in AI, we have to look at the foundation upon which AI is built. Every system has the ability to process and analyze vast amounts of data, and this is where computer chips come into play. Computer chips specifically designed for AI tasks provide the immense processing power required to handle complex algorithms and perform calculations at incredible speeds. These chips are built with advanced architectures and integrated circuits that enable parallel processing, allowing AI systems to handle multiple tasks simultaneously. One of the key components of AI is neural networks, which are designed to mimic the human brain's functioning. Computer chips with specialized accelerators optimize the execution of neural networks, basically speeding up the training and inference processes. These chips are capable of handling the complex mathematical computations needed for deep learning algorithms, enhancing the efficiency of AI models. And as AI applications continue to evolve, energy efficiency becomes more important. Computer chips optimized for AI tasks focus on delivering maximum performance while minimizing power consumption. These energy efficient chips allow AI systems to operate longer, consume less electricity, and reduce the environmental impact of AI deployments. Computer chips make AI possible. Meta has built its own custom computer chips to help with its AI and video processing tasks. In fact, Meta has been making a lot of investments into AI in its self-proclaimed year of efficiency that includes 21,000 layoffs. It's extremely expensive to build your own computer chips, which is why it's not that popular of a move, but the company believes the improved performance is well worth the investment. The company has also changed its data center designs to focus on more energy efficient methods, like liquid cooling to decrease heat. But let's get into the actual chips and what they can do, shall we? The Meta Scalable Video Processor, or MSVP, is one of the new chips and is used to process and transmit video to users while cutting down on energy requirements. Before the invention of this chip, there was nothing that processed and delivered 4 billion videos per day as well as Meta wanted. The keyword here is scalable. That's what uh, differentiates it from other products similar to this. We'd like to be able to scale the energy you spend and the throughput we get. All the generative AI content that people create eventually needs to be encoded in order to be delivered somewhere, right? So this is a must-have block in order to take all those AI, AR, AVR experiences and send them down to the client. So that's how I view the biggest value for MSVP when it comes to the future. The other processor is the first in the family of chips called the Meta Training and Inference Accelerator. The MTIA for short is designed to help with AI-related tasks with this first chip specifically assigned to inference or when an AI model makes a prediction or takes an action. It also powers some of Meta's recommendation algorithms used to show content and ads in people's feeds. It's not officially known who is manufacturing the chip, but it is rumored that Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing is producing the technology. By incorporating the silicon with the software environment, we are able to speed up the software development cycles and deploy the models at a much faster pace and help to improve the user experience. Apparently, Meta has a multi-generational roadmap for its family of AI chips that includes processors used for the task of training AI models. But they're not feeling any pressure to rush this out or even advertise the tech because Meta isn't in the business of cloud computing like Google or Microsoft. Meta's VP of infrastructure said, if you look at what we're sharing, our first two chips that we developed is definitely giving a little bit of a view into what we are doing internally. We haven't had to advertise this and we don't need to advertise this, but you know, the world is interested. Weird flex, but okay. There are also other companies trying to reduce their dependence on NVIDIA, who has a pretty big stranglehold on powerful chip production. OpenAI will need 30,000 of NVIDIA's A100 GPUs for the commercialization of ChatGPT, which comes out today on iOS apps, by the way. And their new H100 chips are selling for $40,000 on eBay. 
Meanwhile, Microsoft has also been developing its own chip to save money, and the project is called Athena. Google has been testing its own TPU processor, and Amazon has the Inferentia 2. It'll be interesting to see who will be the first company to actually be independent from NVIDIA. But Meta has been up to way more than creating chips. The VP of Engineering said that the new hardware was developed to work well with the company's new PyTorch software, which has become the bee's knees for developers looking to create AI apps. And it will also be used to power not only generative AI, but you guessed it, the metaverse, of course. Meta has also developed an AI-powered coding assistant for companies' developers to help them create software, and it'll be similar to Microsoft's GitHub Copilot tool. Adding to this, the company has completed the final build-out of its supercomputer called Research Supercluster. This is the supercomputer they use to train the company's Llama language model as a part of their belief in contributing to open source technology to advance the field of AI. Today, our research supercluster has almost five exaflops of compute power, half an exabyte of storage, 16,000 GPUs, 48,000 network links, and all of this is at the fingertips of our researchers so that they can launch a model from anywhere from eight GPUs to 8,000 GPUs and get their training done faster and do more iterations so that they can train better and bigger models. But this belief could prove to be dangerous. By the way, if you're enjoying this content and want to stay updated on all the latest AI news, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Now back to the video. Open source software is technology that can be freely copied, modified, and reused, giving users the tools they need to create their own chatbots. Meta believes the best thing to do is to share AI's engines as a way to advance into the future. Google and OpenAI take the opposite stance. Perhaps it's because they're the ones with the most pressure on them to not drop the ball. The average person still thinks that this is the only llama worth talking about. Llama was released to researchers for the purpose of advancing AI, but then was leaked to the public, and developers have been building with the tech ever since. Leaked open source software can lead to job displacement before we can even talk about how to transition, and could cause Google and OpenAI to lose their lead in the field. But Meta argues that governments and consumers won't embrace AI until they're out of the control of big tech. Jan Lee Kuhn is Meta's chief AI scientist, and he poses the question, do you want every AI system to be under the control of a couple of powerful American companies? He also pointed to the fact that the internet only became what it is today by open innovation, which is true. Stanford built its own AI using Meta's tech. This system eventually provided info on how to dispose of a dead body without being caught, and generated racist material in support of Adolf Hitler. Stanford promptly took the model down. But if you're Meta, the incentive to do this is obvious. If everyone is using Meta's tools to create things, this evens the playing field. What do you think? Is open source the way or not? Let me know in the comments below. In the meantime, click that video on the screen to watch something you haven't seen. And thanks for visiting AI Focus.